Welcome to Forensics Detectors. Look, the number one question I receive regarding carbon monoxide detectors is, Dr. Cos, where shall we locate our carbon monoxide detector in our home? The number one killer of carbon monoxide to humans is when humans are sleeping. That is correct. Sleeping is a situation where a furnace is running, a car has been left on, there's been a carbon monoxide source that continuously emits carbon monoxide. And because when one is sleeping, there's a high chance, a high probability of inhaling the carbon monoxide over hours and hours of time, which is the accumulation of carbon monoxide in our blood system that then leads to death, folks. What does that tell you, folks? It tells you you need a carbon monoxide detector in your bedroom. Simple as that. If you can, I highly recommend, as an expert in carbon monoxide, a carbon monoxide detector in every single bedroom where humans are sleeping. Second, where shall we locate it, Dr. Coz? I heard carbon monoxide rises. I heard carbon monoxide falls. I heard it mixes with air. Folks, carbon monoxide has nearly the same density as air. It mixes quite well with air. So, and there is actually various scientific publications that demonstrate carbon monoxide evenly distributes in a container, in a sealed container. So it doesn't rise, it doesn't fall. It sort of mixes with air very, very homogeneously, very evenly. Okay. You have to think of a few key scenarios that will help, will avoid failure. Very important. Number one, you look, there's a digital display. It's there for a purpose. We want to be able to see it. So if I'm walking around, if I'm in my bed, if I'm sitting on my couch, I want to be able to see that digital display. That makes sense, right? That's what it's there for. So make sure you could see it. Also, it's nice to see the battery level indicator. If it's going low, you can change the batteries. If people put it low, there's a high chance of it being kicked, bumped, or a pet or child playing and bumping the detector, folks. It's not a good idea, right, folks? It's pretty logical. So I don't recommend people put it low to the ground. I recommend them putting it above four foot, up to six foot, where it's also easy to touch so that you could change the batteries. What? Please don't put it behind um, drapes or any furniture where you cannot see it or you may not be able to hear it not next to any furniture or appliances folks okay so make sure it's not next to a window either because you may crack open the window and there could be a micro plume that directs fresh air to the unit but the rest of the house could be somewhat polluted and it won't represent will not represent the toxic gas in the room correct carbon monoxide detectors are made of electrochemical sensors they are electrochemical elements that react with carbon monoxide and they are affected to high temperatures and low temperatures and you want to make sure you keep the unit as much as possible close to room temperature. One carbon monoxide detector in each bedroom. If you cannot afford Dr. Coz, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I can't. I have five bedrooms and I do not want to buy five carbon monoxide detectors. Well, you may be breaking the law because in your state, there may be a carbon monoxide detector required for each bedroom. So check that. Now, in the case where it's not, and where carbon monoxide detectors are not are not required, I recommend then putting one in the hallway that can alarm to various bedrooms and living spaces if you're on a budget, folks. If you're on a budget, okay? That's what I would recommend. Please make sure you're not leaving your car running in your attached garage. Cars being left running in garages, and then what happens is the carbon monoxide mixes in the garage, it gets sucked into the HVAC system, and gets efficiently distributed in the home with toxic gas of carbon monoxide. So make sure you do not leave your car running in your garage. Make sure your furnace is operating well, and that the flu is connected, folks. You wouldn't believe how many flu disconnections I've seen in my life. And the flu tubing exhaust from a furnace or heating system is detached and the exhaust components are coming back in the home due to, again, the HVAC system sucking it up and distributing it efficiently within the home. Cooking appliances also emit a certain level of carbon monoxide. Make sure you have a range operating, a fan, or crack open a window to make sure that the exchange rate, the exchange of fresh air coming into the home is sufficient. Very, very important folks, because you know what happens these days? We're building homes that are very tight. That's what they call it, very tight. And it limits 
a lot of the natural ventilation, a lot of the natural air coming and going from the home. So what does it mean? It means we're not getting fresh air into the home. And all these toxic gases, if something is wrong, can accumulate quite efficiently. So, till then, be well, be safe, and see you soon.